due in part to the popularization of expensive eco swaps that trick us into believing the only way to become good earth people is to spend hundreds if not thousands replacing all of our unesthetic plastic junk with cute bamboo and glass and carry the perfect urban outfitters apartment the zero waste movement has quite the reputation for being inaccessible zero waste has existed for eons long before Bea johnson instructed us to stuff our produce stickers and unasked for plastic straws into a mason jar so while yes, being eco-minded can be an expensive undertaking, the true blue way to be a good earth person is simply to value and respect our planet's finite resources. When we approach the sustainability movement through this framework and not treat it as a fleeting fad, which hopefully it isn't because... That's when you'll find that depending on your consumer habits prior to lowering your impact, this can be a lifestyle that may actually cost less, a lot less. The part of the Venn diagram where being kind to the planet overlaps with saving money, yeah, that's my happy place. And luckily it's a pretty big overlap, so let's unpack it together. Just buy less crap, it's not hard. Here's an outlandish idea. Please stop me if I get too off the rails though. What if we just bought less? Less clothing, less decor, less tech equals less waste. And coincidentally, less money. I'm definitely not one of those green perfectionists who's going to tell you to never buy anything again and be happy with only what you have forever and ever, amen. That's not my thing. But I will encourage us all to be a little more conscientious of what we're buying. Landfills are full to the brim of all the stuff we thought we wanted. Nowadays, I ask myself if this is something I'll really value for the long haul, or will I get tired of it in six months? Take this fruit basket, for example. It was the most recent thing I bought. I knew it wasn't an outright necessity, like it wasn't life or death perspective, but I could really use it to free up some counter space and provide good airflow for my fruits and veggies. It's a handmade item that I knew would keep its value for a long, long time. Plus it was sold by a small independent business that I was happy to support. So I should just buy it, right? No. <laughs> Old me from the before would have chucked it in my cart without a second guess, with absolutely zero thought about whether I'd even like it a decade from now. Now, even if it ticks all the boxes, I add it to my wish list first. Sleep on it, so to speak. Now I know that if I put something on my wish list and several weeks or months go by and I still remember that I love that item, I can be pretty sure that it's a good use of my money and the resources it took to make the item. I like to think of this tip as insurance against myself because Countless other times I put something I really wanted on my wish list. And when I revisit the thing at a later date, I'm like, oh God, why did I want that? Who was I even when I pinned this? Use it up and wear it out. I know I'm not the only one who's been wooed by the down to earth aesthetics of sustainable materials. They're beautiful and beauty is important, it's art. But if you're only here for the beauty, you'll quickly find out that not everything about living sustainably is photogenic. But that's a topic for another video. I'd encourage some thought before rushing to replace something with its zero waste counterpart, just because it looks more eco-friendly. As they say, the most sustainable object is the one you already own. And guess what? It's also the least expensive since you already forked over the cash for it. So using what you have, if you have it, is arguably the best way to save money and is truly zero waste. Before buying a reusable shopping bag, for example, Ask yourself if you already have a worn out t-shirt stashed away somewhere that can be turned into a tote, no sewing required. Don't like how wasteful and expensive your Swiffer mop pads are? Use up the last of your refills and then replace them with a downcycled old rag and a two ingredient floor cleaner. And prepare for some real talk. If you're not the kind of person who doesn't use a straw, you're probably not gonna use the fancy stainless steel straws either. I learned that lesson the hard way. <laughs> Getting thrifty with it. This one's my favorite because there are so many wonderful and useful treasures already in existence, just waiting to be plucked from the waste stream. From clothing to furniture to even plants. Cha, plants. This tall drink of water set me back 10 whole dollars on Facebook Marketplace. She answers to Big Sharon. And all my tech, like the iPhone I'm filming this video on, the laptop I'm gonna be editing it with, and the iPad that I'm reading this script off of, all bought secondhand. In fact, the vast majority of the possessions I've collected in the past four years were secondhand, and it saved us thousands. I couldn't even begin to quantify.
I'll be honest though, thrifting is easier when you love the thrill of the hunt. In the before, I was all about scouring the clearance racks to find the best deal. I was so proud of my frugality, not realizing that I was wasting money instead of saving it because I was buying lots of cheap new things that I never used or even liked. Now I can channel that thrill into thrifting, but I still have to be super mindful about what I'm bringing home, even if it is secondhand. I keep a running list in my notes app of things to keep an eye out for, and if it's not on the list, chances are it's not going in my cart either. Ditch the disposables. Paper towels, plastic wrap, makeup wipes, plastic razors. These are all things we used to buy on a pretty regular basis that we've since decided to do without. And I gotta tell ya, never looked back. The thing they have in common, obviously, is that they're all disposable and the cost to replace them definitely adds up every month. Not all reusable swaps are created equal though when it comes to saving money. Like I mentioned earlier with the disposable straws, if you don't use a disposable version of something already, then there's no use buying its reusable equivalent. But I can think of several sustainable swaps that have saved me lots. For instance, the Tushy Bidet attachment has helped us to reduce our toilet paper use by about 50%, which means that we can spend slightly more money now on a more sustainable option. And the menstrual cup and safety razor, arguably two of the most intimidating swaps to make, but I'm so glad I did because uh, yeah, you better believe I crunched those numbers. And in the four years I've been using them, I've saved $400, which is really cool because if you think about it, that means I have a little bit more money every year to put towards some something else sustainable that could then save me money in the long run. And thus the cycle continues. And aside from the menstrual cup and safety razor, we've saved about 20 to $30 a month by not buying disposables anymore, including but not limited to Ziploc baggies, trash bags, coffee filters, bottled water, tissues, makeup wipes, tampons, cling wrap, Q-tips, single use cleaning supplies, etc. This one is kind of tricky to talk about though, because for the most part, single use items usually always have a lower upfront cost than their reusable counterpart. If you're struggling to pay rent, are you really going to buy the $10 silicone baking mat or are you gonna go for the $3 aluminum foil? It takes a great deal of privilege to A, be able to spend more in the beginning, even if it means you'll save more in the long run, and B, shop in accordance with your values. Yes, foregoing disposables and slowly replacing them with reusables has saved us a lot of money in the long run. But we had to spend more to save more, if you know what I mean. There's a definite barrier to entry that we need to get sorted out. Practice a primarily plants policy. <sighs> All right, I hesitate to include this one because I strongly dislike food shaming or potentially coming off like I maybe could be food shaming. But if we're talking about literal dollars and cents here, eating less meat or going without if you're feeling up to it, yeah, the savings could be significant. Going plant-based has saved us 20 to $40 a month, which to us is a lot. Eating less meat can be less expensive or more expensive though, depending on what your current diet looks like and what you're transitioning into. For instance, when we went vegetarian, all we did was cut out meat, but we kept buying dairy and eggs, which are relatively affordable. But when we went vegan, suddenly we were buying fancy vegan substitutes like plant milk and butter and occasionally treats like yogurt. These things are definitely more expensive than their animal products counterparts. So it's hard for me to preach the virtues of veganism to people who are struggling financially or live in food deserts. I'm just not gonna do that. If you're able to cook a lot from scratch, for instance, make your own oat milk, you can definitely save some money. But then again, there's the time commitment, which I don't think everyone has the privilege of, not to mention you'll be taking a hit in the nutrition department because homemade oat milk cannot compete with the nutrients found in cow's milk or soy milk. I will say though that cutting out meat is the most effective way to reduce your impact on planet Earth. And it can be more affordable too, so I thought it was worth mentioning. Save the green bells in your fridge and the green backs in your pocket. If you caught my last video, you'll know we save lots of money by preventing food waste. If you haven't seen that video yet, it's all about how we store produce so that it stays super fresh for as long as vegetally possible. You guessed it, mostly without plastic. And another way that we prevent food waste is by... Menu planning. Menu planning doesn't take that much effort at all, but for me, it feels like... 
exercising an ounce of control in this capitalist hellscape. First, I take inventory of what we already have so that we can use it up. Then I take to the World Wide Web to check out my grocery store's weekly specials. And usually what's on sale is in season, which is a win-win scenario for the planet and our pocketbooks. After I make the grocery list based on what's on sale and in season, I make a quick menu plan for the week that also incorporates what we already have in the pantry and any stragglers still clinging to life in the fridge. And here's a pro tip when making a menu plan. Well, you probably already know this, but if you're not doing it yet, it will change your game. And that's to leave the last day of the week blank and have a clear out the fridge night. It'll help you prioritize eating what's still left before stocking up again at the grocery store. If you want some inspiration, I often post our weekly minimal waste and plant-based mini plans and grocery lists on Instagram. So go follow me there if you're interested in nerdy dorky things. And another way to save money by preventing food waste is buying from companies like Imperfect Foods. They take food that maybe isn't up to the cosmetic standards that grocery stores place on produce because it's not enough to have unrealistic beauty standards for women. We gotta have them for lemons too. Our obsession with perfection when it comes to produce accounts for nearly 40% of all food waste, by the way. So yeah, instead of a lot of perfectly delicious food being sent to landfill, Imperfect sells it to you for a discount. If you wanna try, I'll have a referral code down in the description box below and you can get $80 off your first month and I'll get a $30 shop credit to shop all the funny looking lemons I want. By the way, I paid for all this myself. Imperfect Foods has no idea I inhabit this planet. I just really value their service and mission. Every minimal waste household functions so differently, so it's super important to keep reevaluating what works for your family and what doesn't. Right, babe? Is there a specific principle of zero waste that's helped you either save or break even? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you're curious to see how we put our imperfect box to the test for a week's worth of plant-based dishes, definitely watch this video next. Okay, bro?